this is this is this is. All right, we got Joey Milligan, Nate Young. Uh, welcome, welcome to the podcast, guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. So, Amberlynn just got done with uh, your first tour in quite a while. Yeah. By the way, before before we jump into all this, I just got to say, when 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 I went on tour with you guys, I don't know what year it was. It was you know three four years ago. Twenty fourteen. Was it twenty fourteen? So long. Yeah, okay, that's so yeah. long ago. Crazy. <laughs> I had a bet, or I tried to make a bet with my buddy, and I was like, guaranteed, 100 bucks, they're not going to break up. Eventually, they're going to come back. Uh, I just had a feeling. I was like, there's, like, especially after being on your tour, it was just like, this is too good. You guys have too, yeah. you know, too good of a fan base. Like, you don't have to do it all the time necessarily, but I, yeah. I wanted to bet my friend. He would not take the bet because he was like, I, I agree. <laughs> I'm not taking yeah, that bet. See, I, I would have taken the bet. I was so convinced, like, <laughs> this is our last show. I, yeah. No, I would have taken it the other. I would have been like, yeah, not a chance. I mean, we—it's so funny. We truly did feel that way. We thought it was, we thought it was the end forever. I mean, that's how it felt. So, it is weird. And I think even you saying that, it, you know, a couple years ago, but you know, five years a lot changes because that's when we decided to kind of pick back up. Yeah. Do stuff on our own terms, but I don't think we ever thought about that we could do it on our own terms. Like you just said, like it might not be full time, but I don't think we wrapped our heads around that it was like, oh, we don't have to tour ten months out of the year. Yeah. You know what I mean? We, I mean, you have so, all those obligations too, with like a record label and a booking agent, and you know, fan expectation too of like needing to be relevant, needing to be out there all the time. You know. Oops. So what changed? I mean, a lot changed. So, I mean, what, what do you want to talk about that changed? Because so many things have changed. You know, what brought you guys back? I mean, I know you're, you're working on new stuff already, new songs, and yeah. you just put out, you put out a, a new song. What is it called? Two Graves? Two Graves. Yeah, yeah. Really cool stuff. Picking up where you left off, maybe going even further. I don't know, you know. So, so what brought it back? What, what was the main, if, if there was anything, what, what was that moment? For you guys well i did that show with steven remember in albuquerque oh, yeah. and uh steven and i were kind of just chit chatting about you know how how i wonder how everybody's doing yeah oh yeah you st we still talk here and there and stuff like that and and it, it got into this like i was there for like three days so it turned into this like three-day conversation of like well maybe i don't know maybe you can give the guys a call maybe we'll you know <laughs> see what happens and and how long ago is that old. how long ago two years ago that was 2018 2018 2018 okay three years yeah, ago. yeah 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 i mean it was similar for me too like i you know no one like hated each other it wasn't like a huge thing at the end but i didn't really talk to i kept in touch with joey and a handful but like steven and i hadn't talked much at all the singer and so he he called me and it was the same kind of thing. We just like reconnected and he's like, yo, what if, what if we like, what if we did stuff here and there? And so we kind of hit a spot where we, for me at least, we lived so much life since then. Like we'd gone through so much stuff and like things that you really cared about in the band prior, like feelings getting hurt or whatever. You just didn't care anymore. You know, I was like, sure. I mean, it just felt like life short. We're like, what if we played some shows and did this? And we we're like, <laughs> yeah, why not? Like, I wish there was like a bigger, cooler thing where it's like, oh, we had this plan, but we were just like similar to how we broke up. It just felt like, cool, this seems right. You know, it feels like the right time. So we talked about it and we all got together. We went and like stayed on the beach together one night and we all like just kept, like caught up with our with our manager as well and just talked and was like, yo, what, what if we did do um, some things here and there? And then our friends in Under Oath, that's really what sparked us at least playing one show back is they were playing a home mm -hmm. show in Tampa and they were like, yo, do you guys want to play? And I was like, Oh, so, and Tim is uh, the guitar player is my brother-in-law. So he just asked me straight up. He's like, would you guys want to play? And so we just talked about it and we all just were like, yeah, why not? So it was, yeah, honestly, it was pretty, pretty super arty and wild. inspirational. We all met yeah. up at the beach and went night swimming <laughs> Yeah, it was, it, we had to get in touch with our feelings and like explore a bunch of stuff. So, what year was this? This was <laughs> that that was tw beginning of 2018. 2018. Right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. that show was in December. So, 
Oh, okay. Or, you right. know, maybe it wasn't beginning. It was, like, early summer, maybe, of 2018. Mm. Yeah. And then we had a plan to do, like, a tour in 2019, a tour in 2020, and then maybe, like, be, quote, unquote, done again. Not, like, break up again, but just kind of, like, go do our separate things. And, obviously, 2020 happened, and we weren't able to tour in the summer. So then we were like, well, if we're not going to tour we should probably do something so then we started messing around with ideas for new songs and we didn't really have a plan to do any new music we just kind of were like found this extra time you know we're all we all have full-time jobs to do other stuff so it wasn't like we were just sitting around but we had enough headspace to like wrap our heads around like songs so that's kind of where we're at now with new songs is like that wasn't a big plan either we just kind of stumbled on it so well i I love what you guys are doing with your live streams and I'd love to get into how that came about. What were the conversations and why did you do it the way you did it? So you guys have done an incredible job offering for those that don't know live streams, but also uh, pressing vinyl for every single show, every live stream show that you do, you have a, a vinyl record for that show, which is so cool. So can you guys talk about, I mean, I love, I love you guys are one of the few bands that really did something I felt was your own you weren't just following along with what other acts were kind of doing which is there's nothing wrong with oh that works let me do that but but i really felt like okay you guys are doing something all on your own you're taking a a chance and i just love i loved i love what you guys are doing so can we just talk about live streams and how how your fans reacted (laughs) to all that and and how the ideas came about the, the thing like what resources do you have you know like what what can we do to still have fun playing music and do something, you know, within the, you know, the realm of possibilities at the time. And I think honestly, had Nate not really taken the reins, we probably would have stuck with what we did the first time, which was a single camera in a small, you know, venue. And it, it just kind of, again, snowballed into this whole thing. And then like, not not that any of us like had any kind of um i any shred of an idea of where it would actually end up like um we kind of let artistically let nate have free reign and it turned into like plants are everywhere and like crazy you know digital wall and stuff and it was bananas and yeah very cool so nate what was your what was your vibe what was your your vision for so the start of it was like early on, like when it was like lockdown time, like we were like, oh man, what's going on? And uh, Christian and Steven were, went and did this like stream for free on Facebook at like a friend's, you know, venue and they were shut down obviously. And they hit us back and they're like, yo, what about a full band live stream? Cause we did this acoustic and it was really cool. And at the time I was like, okay like that could be cool but i didn't really think you know we also didn't know how long we we're like okay this will like get us to fall when we could tour here or whatever you know this can give so mm-hmm. so we did the one like joey said with the camera and uh it was just a single camera and it was cool and it was really fun and i saw how our fans like were really pumped just like see us in the interaction so then we just started talking more and we were like yo we might have to do more of these so instead of doing that like how do we push it and so we explored a bunch of different spaces. Um, we found this place again, every, everyone's just down to work during this time too. So we found this place that, uh, has a huge warehouse and they do, you know, all, you can rent lights from it and video walls. And like Joey said, so they kind of had nothing set up, but they're like, Hey, we could set up a few things and you guys could stream out of here. So I just ran with it. My homie, Dustin, who's a cinematographer, a bunch of stuff. I talked to him. I was like, yo, what is possible for live streams? Like how many cameras can we do? And what, you know is is doable so for me i started like you said i was watching other bands doing and it looked like a lot of bands were trying to bring uh, a live show to the stream which there's nothing wrong with that i think that was the goal for everyone it's like yo if live or if uh, live shows can't happen let's do a stream that feels like a live show so for me i was like look this is such a unique opportunity where when will we ever be in this spot again in the sense of like we're having to like come up with stuff on the fly so i was like why don't we do stuff that we could never do live instead of doing a live show and filming it and be like hey it's like your live show i was like we can't afford or be able to travel with like like joey said i had this one idea 
where I went to Walmart, Home Depot, and Lowe's and bought a shit ton of plants and just, I was like, I want to make it look like we're <laughs> playing in this, like, jungle with we had this backlit wall and i want to look like apocalypse now like all this stuff and i was like because we can't do that live like we're not i'm not going to travel with plants so and we the way we filmed it um dustin who who worked with me on this we uh, i was really proud and pumped at how we pushed it i mean one of the or a few of the streams we did one shot the whole stream we we literally never stopped once we started there was not a single cut and mm -hmm. and we were just trying to do things that we were like, you know, no one really is going to look back and be like, oh, no one's ever done that. But we were like, let's do something that no one's ever done, like a one shot live stream. It was a steady cam and there was not a single break. We were just like, let's go. We changed the vibe. We worked really hard on like not, you know, not having it feel like the same thing. So we did that and we just we wanted to push it and try stuff that we could never do live. So honestly, it was really fun. It was a lot of work. I mean, trying to like rack my brain with like all right now we're on to like our fifth album and it's like what else <laughs> and i was like it was like we did plants and i was like all right what's we can't just keep doing plants you know so it's like trying to like come up with different um do we do rocks you know, now or <laughs> yeah yeah i was like what yeah exactly we literally we're dancing like, upside down <laughs> alien yeah, i did i went weird with it i just hit a spot where i was like let's just do whatever we want and and then with us pushing it the place where we're doing it kind of grew with us mm -hmm. and then they like built a bigger area for us to do they made the video wall like 10 times as big so we were able to like because they were pumped they were like they were getting more bands coming in to shoot there as well and so we just kind of kept pushing it with them and every time i would talk to them they're like yeah we could do that we could do that we do like a shiny floor so it reflects and so it, it was a lot of work, but it was really, uh, you know, artistically, it was like very satisfying, like um, being able to kind of try things that, you know, I'd never seen done. And so it was fun, man. It, 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 it really was. I think now that they're over, you know, we might do like a couple more, like a B-side or a covers one. Mm -hmm. um, but now they're over, I'm like, I like weirdly miss it. I'm like, oh, man, that was just such <laughs> a unique thing, you know, that we were kind of thrown into and had to adapt and come up with cool stuff. So. Um, but man, that's awesome that you, that you noticed and that you were stoked on. So thank yeah. you for saying that. Yeah. Noticed for sure. Was, was the rest of the band in it from day one where they, did they get your vision? Or <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, it, right. I, Trusted. First, yeah. They the trust first, you. <laughs> the first one, there was definitely like, uh, cause I was like, yo, uh, we're going to do a lot of like silhouetted stuff. I was like, I really want to do like these weird shots where it's like, you know, it's it, we did this like um, picture within a picture thing where it was like, you know, back, and, you know, and, and so I showed him examples and they were like, all right, like, you know, the first one was a little bit funky with everyone. And then the next one, I was like, look, I want everyone to wear all white. And they were like, oh, uh, like everyone. <laughs> so it, it, a little bit to like, I was like, dude, trust me, it's going to look cool. We're going to do this. And then I was like, and then the plants one was the biggest one. And everyone was like, what? Like, uh, all right, dude. like. And, they kept and there's this up, guy creeping yeah. around with a camera. Yeah. Like, <laughs> is this, yeah, and I was like, it's going to be one shot. He's going to be like going through us. And they're like, all right. But towards the end, I mean, it was, it was, it was nice that everyone just kind of let me do whatever I wanted, which was really fun. So yeah, they that's text and Nate like, Hey man, what are we wearing next? Yeah. They'd just be like, yo, so what's the vibe? And I'm like, all right, here's what we're doing. <laughs> you got to wear a gardening outfit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get some boots. Wear a sari next time. Uh, some Hawaiian shirts are going to be playing on a beach. <laughs> I mean, that would... <laughs> I mean, that's sort of like the first level is just, okay, everybody, like, we we all wear kind of similar dark clothing or whatever, but <laughs> you guys are taking it to, to so many different levels with plants <laughs> and, and having... You know the one camera on a certain shoot, and then you're doing different album each each album, right? You do you did yeah. every one of your albums, so yeah. how was learning all those songs again? <laughs> what was the hardest part? It, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. I mean, it was tough. That was like, a lot I, of work. I, I also I have nowhere to set up my drums because I don't like I just don't have a place in my house, and so and plus being like full time other stuff. I just listened to the album a ton. And the first time I played it was when we practiced the night before. Because all of us are so busy. We would practice one night before, load up, go to Orlando, and then practice for like half of the night, the night, uh, or the, the night before the actual stream. So it was like this quickest thing. We all just kind of had to like adapt and learn quick. But 
for me, I just would listen to the record a ton, but I wasn't able to play it. And it was weird how quick it came back, though. But some of these songs we never played, ever. I mean, some of these yeah. were like, I've never even played this part that I wrote in the studio except for again, whatever it was, 12 years ago. So uh, it, that was a challenge, but it was fun yeah. trying to learn them all. So. Jeez, I can only imagine trying not to screw up all those songs. And, just like... and when it, we were like, it's one shot live. Like, That's it. It's live. It was like, oh. Yeah, well, says the guy with like 30 records out. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I was mean, about to God, say, yeah, I yours, yours is imagine. a little different. I feel like R7 compared to how many you have would be a little tougher. And I think that's actually how Mike and I connected on this was like, I, it was so much fun going through like, you know, my, my Instagram feed and seeing all these, you know, MXPX playing songs like just in your space or whatever. And I was like, man, like, I really appreciate that you guys are, are doing that and like putting this music out and still doing like getting out there the way that we can with, you know, the means that we have. Mm -hmm. And I, I, Absolutely, that's what people feel about you guys. Amberlynn, seeing you doing the live streams, coming back with vinyl. Like, there's just, you're giving people a lot without having to really, I mean, you're, you're doing a lot, of course, with the live stream, but you're not out there traveling the yeah. world necessarily, or you, you are now, but <laughs> but you weren't then. And, and yeah, totally. just doing something, I, I, I love that you, you could have just been like, all right, let's, we were about to come back and we did for, you know, the, the Under Oath show and this and that, but let's just chill for a while and like wait, yeah. which I mean, honestly is the smarter move guys, but I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> I mean, we, we, it's funny. We, we debated that for sure. I mean, that was a big conversation. It was like, look, we did the one stream. Like, should we just chill? Like we all kind of hit this spot. We're like, well, you know, let's, and we explored it. And, and, and but yeah, that was the option. I mean, we were like, maybe we should just not do this. What was, was the reaction? Like, <laughs> what was the reaction from, from the fans after that first yeah. stream? It, that's what honestly is why we did it. I mean, after the first stream, even some of my homies, and at that point, like I said, not we weren't the first to do the stream, but not a lot of bands were doing full band streams. So everyone was hitting, it was like, dude, that was so much fun. It was just, it was cool to see you guys in that atmosphere of like, you know, you go to a show and it's professional and just Steven talks, but we were all just like, all had mics and we were chatting and just like talking and, you know, fans were like, writing and we were responding to him we were like bantering and honestly the banter aspect was like the biggest part that our fans loved that was, it was the it, it, biggest it was, part yeah it was cool but it, part of me was like cool guys i like i did all this work and no one wants to like you know, <laughs> they're like oh our favorite part is when you guys would just like talk so yeah. and again that that was what was cool about it is um in between almost every song we just stopped we had a screen on the side and we would just live interact with fans and, and it was really fun and i think it was cool for people to see that we all like get along we're all friends so like that aspect um is what i think kept us going too because we saw how much our fans were into it and then doing this uh these shows that we just did we did like a vip thing where people come in and watch our sound check and we like talk to them and the biggest thing everyone wanted to talk about was the streams and how like thankful they were that we did it they were like hey i just want to say like the streams like really were huge for us going through that last year and we were just so it that was cool to hear because you know like i said you could see it on this on the screen when you're talking to them but you know you, you don't know how much of an impact it actually had so it was cool hearing them actually like let us know how much they enjoyed it so it was yeah cool. yeah people needed they needed something to look forward to when they're in lockdown something to yeah you know just distract them a little Take bit mind off stuff. yeah and and that's that's real that's very real yeah. and you guys definitely and that's for us too. yeah yeah so you guys weird. gave yourselves something to do i i was yeah. talking to to my business partner uh tom about just how everybody's a little crazy after covid you know everybody's yeah. in yeah. different ways ways that you don't always realize and one of the things that i'm like i don't i think i'm you know I've, oh, well, we've always been a little crazy right but i don't feel yeah. like i went nuts <laughs> during covid yeah, yeah. during the lockdown yeah. bit at least because we had so much work to do you yeah. know with the live streams every week we're like okay we have this set coming up i don't know half these songs you know yeah. the, like you were saying you know you hadn't even played some of those songs ever and yeah. uh that to me is like such a gift like the gift of of whatever you know for for us it's work but it's also very very yeah. much rewarding work so having that really really brought uh, me and and mxpx through the pandemic it kind of sounds like you guys too i don't know how how crazy crazy did you go joey 
Oh man, we <laughs> we looked forward to every single stream because we knew it was going to be a weekend where we were all together, all hanging yeah. out and playing music. And so it became like that little mark on your calendar of like the thing you're counting down to and you're excited and you, you know, you can't wait to like meet up and have fun with everybody. And, um, I know for Christian too, uh, like he hadn't ever played a lot of these songs. Uh, oh so, yeah. Because was, the first few was before him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he was super excited because these are, some of these are songs that he had always wanted to play with us, but we were like, ah, it's old. And, <laughs> Almost bordering no, on some was, pop punk style stuff too, like some of your oh, old yeah. stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a blast, man. It was so much fun, like getting together and you know, a, a you know, tiny little like garage and like just like jamming out songs and then getting together and actually playing what felt like a show, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you guys are practicing, where do you practice? In St. Pete, uh, Christian built like his garage. He has like a little studio practice space that he's like built out it's really cool and mm -hmm. we've just practiced there which is really nice too because when we broke up we got rid of all of our like practice spaces and everything so yeah. it's nice that he has that spot where we could just you know we really short-sighted really short-sighted of us <laughs> yeah we sold like all of our gear none of our in so we had to like re -get everything is everybody in florida these days now yeah yeah when we broke up it was not we were all Three of us stayed in Florida. Joey was in Austin, and then uh, Stephen was in New Mexico. That's right, Joey. Austin. That's right. We we yeah. We've talked a little bit about that. How was Texas? Yes, <laughs> we don't need to get into it, but we can if you want to. <laughs> Texas is in the past. So it's, it's, let me ask you guys a serious question: Is Florida the best state? Oh yeah. Because from your I actions, mean, it seems like it is. <laughs> it, it's wild down here. I mean, it's. It's funny because I've lived here my whole life, and it's like it's all I know. And I, and you know, once I started touring, I realized that I was like, oh, I'm never gonna leave. Like I just it's the only place that I feels like true home for me. Mm -hmm. But now that I live here and I don't tour as much, and I'm just staying here, uh, I I'm like, oh yeah, all all the stuff that people like hear, obviously news and people, it's like Florida's the brunt of like every joke. Um, but really, some of it does not let you down. I mean, it really is wild. <laughs> With, with just i mean it's it's just all over the place but i love it because it's just it's exciting and it's 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 a weird place to live so yeah i could not wait to get home so i'm very excited to be back yeah. why what was it about texas that you had to just get out uh there's a lot of stuff um i think i was there for like 10 years you know um and there's a lot of like you know, personal change and, and a lot of, uh, things where after a while I just started, like, I remember it was a couple of years ago. I was, I started thinking like, like, man, I think I'm like, I think I'm done here. Like, I think, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, I, I really want to go home and, uh, it's, it took a good, uh, a lot of things happening for that to finally like come to fruition. But, uh, ultimately it was the best, it was the best move. I, um, I mean the minute, I mean, even like moving out of Texas was a nightmare, like just kidding, like everything organized. And like, I decided, you know, I had the bright idea like, Oh, well, you know, when I moved out here, I just packed up a U-Haul in St. Pete and just drove straight to Austin. Like, so that's how I'm leaving. So it, that, that steak kicked me in the ass all the way out. <laughs> like it was like from like a, you know, misbooked trailer to a broken trailer to nothing, not everything fit in my car and that, and the trailer to, you know, like, uh, getting the late start. And I'm like in the panhandle, which I, I'm sure you've driven through the panhandle a number of times. It takes forever. Yeah. And like, it was like middle of the night and I'm like just driving and I'm like, just, I have to stop. I'm so close, <laughs> but I have to stop. Like, and you're um, like, I should be better oh, at this. Finally, I've toured my whole life. Yeah, right. <laughs> but like, we did so many years in a van and trailer. Like, um, but I remember like just kind of hitting, uh, the skyway bridge that goes from St. Pete into, uh, Palmetto, Florida and hitting that and having like this, lot of memories of like 
uh, Channel 44 news where like the 44 became the outline of the Skyway Bridge and like, you know, and like just this whole moment of like looking out and just nothing but water on either side, which I don't know if you know, it's not a lot of in Texas. So, <laughs> um, so that was like that moment of like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm finally like I'm home, you know? Yeah. It's weird because, I mean, to me, Florida just seems like a more tropical Texas, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's crazy both yeah. places to me. But uh, it's, it's honestly funny is. he went from Texas to Florida. Those are the two most, like, wild states ever. So. <laughs> they really are. Yet, doing doing okay, I mean, in most most ways, it yeah. seems like. I mean, I don't hear much, much about him. Except for like the alligators attacking people and things like that. Oh, yeah. Only in Which are all true. I heard Dog the Bounty Hunter was in Florida right now looking for a, a fugitive. Ah, yes, I heard that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so if you see him, tell oh, him, say, what up, dog? <laughs> <laughs> he's very Florida. I'm sure he's not from, I don't, maybe he's from Florida. I have no idea, but he should like Hawaii, be. Hawaii, actually. Oh, okay, that yeah, makes but sense, I, yeah. But I think he does. I remember. It all kind of adds up. He, he he looks like he should he should, he should, live here. He should run here. for mayor of Florida or is it governor? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> mayor. He would probably mayor, win. Mayor of Florida. Oh, yeah. God, come on, guy. Oh, come who's on. that? Oh, who's that? that? Oh, this is Pocket. He's been bothering me this entire time. So. What's up, Pocket? Yeah, I know. That's <laughs> so Pocket, cute. Yeah. For those that aren't aren't that are just listening, just listening, Pocket is a very cute dog, very tiny dog that looks like maybe it'd fit in your pocket. Hey, look at that. Oh, hey. He's, uh, there he is. He's also Wait, uh, a, uh, so he 13 years young. Let's get into now. let's get into touring. Uh, I'd love to yeah. hear about your tour. You just did it. Everybody wants everybody that's not out on the road is probably, you know, got a little bit of FOMO, a little little bit, yeah. but but wants to know. So how was it? What was I mean, we can get into all aspects. I'd love to. I got more questions, but I'll just leave it at how was it for now? <laughs> overall it was, it was awesome i mean you know leading up to it was so much i mean just with like should we do it should we not do it what are the protocols like how are we going to do it who's going to come you know is all of those questions i felt like i was just talking to our manager this morning and i was like the actual leading up to the tour felt like 10 times longer than the actual tour like the tour itself was only about it was a little over three weeks so it wasn't a long tour but just you know it's as we all know it's such a strange time for live music so it's like really tough to like know what was the right call so mm -hmm. i mean down to the week before we were going to start we were like we had a big meeting we're like should we still tour <laughs> like it just was down to that <laughs> it was just like and you know without getting too much into like internal stuff like um no please do <laughs> yeah i mean I, I, I so like i i was vaxxed but i still got it at the end of july so and my go was really smooth with it and i was through it pretty quick and so um that was kind of right when everything was coming out with like oh people that are back can get this one mm -hmm. and blah blah and then this is before the it. before the tour yeah this was before okay. the tour so in, our tour started beginning of september and this was end of july that i got it okay. so i was like damn so and then steven our singer got it in august and he got it really rough i mean he was yeah. okay, but it, it, it really set him back. I mean, he, he had to, like, go to the hospital a couple times, and, like, wow. he, so he had a rough go. This. So that was a big part of it. We're like, dude, like, you, you know, you can't do it. Like, let's cancel. And he started to feel better, but not until, like, two and a half, three weeks later. So leading up to it, we were just, like, I mean, we did our final stream, and we pre-recorded that one so we could – do a live stream the original goal was to watch it at an amc theater with everyone mm. and do like live questions obviously everything kind of went gnarly down here and no one was doing any of that stuff anymore and then we decided to do like a live um uh like convert like the banter was going to be just like this but it was live with fans and steven right. couldn't even be on that because he was too sick like so we had to like tell fans like steven's going through this and this was only a couple weeks before tour was going to start so leading up to it was just so much steven pulled through he was adamant about doing it. He met with his doctor and his doctor was like, yo, if you're good, if you, um, you know, take these precautions and kind of take it as much as easy as you can. And so just leading up to it was just so much. But once we like got on tour, we, we did a pretty gnarly, like 
band in the bubble type of approach. Sure. Can I mean, you we explain like, a little bit of the band in the bubble stuff? For yeah, people? absolutely. So we were just like, if we're going to do this, we have to be as safe as possible. And we cannot just kind of hope that things go well, you know? So we made some hard lines, like not a single person on the bus. If you don't start the tour, you cannot come on the bus at all. Like vax or on vax, like not a single person on the bus. And then backstage, we had zero guests, like no matter where you played, if you had family in town. And then we were just like, look, we all want to do this tour. So we met with our crew and everyone. And we said, look, like we trust you guys, but like, let's just do our best. Like we, we kind of made this rule, no eating inside. We like, we're like, yo, get, it's going to kind of suck, but like get food to go. And we're just all going to stay within this, you know, bubble to where we can like, you know, mitigate risk. That was what it came down to. Like, how can we mitigate risk to be able to finish this tour and get through the whole thing? So, you know, we had a lot of rapid tests on the bus that we would take if someone kind of felt like they were feeling anything or like, you know, felt exposed or whatever. Um, but man, I mean, we did it. Like we were just talking about it. Like we made it through the whole thing and not a single person, you know, even got like a cold or anything questionable. And, you know, I think, it was due to like us just being really diligent with making sure that we, um, you know, we're safe as possible because getting back in front of crowds, you know, you never know. And it's like, this is such a strange thing where it's like, you don't know where it comes, you know, like I said, when I got it in July, I was like, I have no idea. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I couldn't even pinpoint it to like, Oh, I was around someone or whatever. So to do the tour, we were just like, let's, let's do everything we can to actually get through it. So the fact that we did felt like, the biggest accomplishment ever. I mean, we were like, I've never felt when we got home, I, I feel like I was just like, you know, on cloud nine and also just felt surreal getting through it. So, um, but yeah, that's, we did it. that's a big <laughs> team effort, man. That's a big it team is, effort. Man. So 12 people all on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, normally you just get sick being on tour. Mm -hmm. Like oh, it doesn't yeah. matter like what it is. And, and actually, I, I was having a conversation with a friend the other day. I was like, now that I think about it, I was like, I haven't had a cold in like two years. And yeah. then we were talking about it. It's because everyone is masked up and no and, one's going and anywhere. And everyone's just safer. Everyone's washing their hands. Everyone's yeah. like conscious. If they feel junky, they don't go out. But it's like hilarious. It's like, man, I feel great. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's true. I mean, same with same here. I haven't had a cold. Well, it's been longer than that probably, but been yeah. a, lo a long time but uh everybody's staying a little bit away washing hands wearing masks yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah i mean yeah, you guys even in florida you wear masks in florida or is it frowned upon do you get, <laughs> well, it's, get illegal. No. it's illegal right it's illegal to mandate it <laughs> uh, no i mean i wear a mask in florida it, it, we're in tampa and tampa's pretty like progressive so here it's not i don't i don't see but if you travel outside of tampa and in some of the other areas Dude, I'll tell you what, I'm not here to talk shit, but Nashville was <laughs> wild. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, Na Nashville was like, I I was like, I'm from Florida. And I was like, you guys make us look like the like safest, most respectful people ever. <laughs> I was like, I walked into a bar to like, it was like, we were going to go sit outside and eat because we were all like, you know, going to go have like dinner outside in like no no one on the staff was there. I was just like, I haven't even seen that down here in a long time. So anyway, I was just like everywhere we went. I, I, and then our, our sound guy was at another bar outside and he got like someone in his face about him wearing a mask, like got like upset at him. Wow. And we were just like, where are we? So anyway, you're representing not, tyranny. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not trying to Chattanooga visiting my, uh, my parents and, um, drove uh over to nashville like just um it was just like a little road trip like a day trip or something and um i was uh showing my girlfriend around because she'd never been to nashville so we go through uh you know music row there and i mean both of us were just jaws dropped. I mean, the streets are just lined with people partying with no masks and just, just wooing and all kinds of stuff, like going crazy. It was like, we are not getting out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, who knows? It's... That turned into talking shit on Nashville. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I love yeah, Nashville. Right. And they're outside at least, right? So yeah, yeah, it seems like right. it's, I guess Fair it's enough. okay if you're outside. And, but... and we can't talk too much. We just played shows with people in <laughs> Room. so it's that's like, also fair you know, it's like you just gotta find like i said before you mitigate risk and 
you know, I, we just try to. Yeah, I'm kind of one of those one of those persons where I want to respect other people's choices, and hopefully they respect mine, and that that's it. So yeah, 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 yeah. whatever right. that may be, craziness. Yep. <laughs> so Hope for the best. To, okay, what else, what what else about touring? I mean, obviously, you know, you're in a bubble. You're no guests, but the shows you guys did you guys play places you've played before was there was there any shows that got moved or they got shut down or was it all good like it, it was every show went off because i've heard about yeah. some shows getting canceled like last second like night of or things like yeah. that yeah yeah someone test positive inside or the crew honestly we didn't have any of that stuff every show was smooth every show all the i mean some of the venues was like very low staff you know, like they were like, yeah. look, our normal staff's just not here right now. You know, it was like they bring in a bunch of people. So that was like a few times were kind of funky. Like some people were like, you know, I think it was Houston. I think the whole staff was like, this is my, this is our first day. We've never done anything. <laughs> like they just were like yeah. calling people off the streets. So, yeah. But again, we got through the show and everyone knew what it was. You know, we just kind of like got through it. But that that was about as bad as it got. No, nothing got canceled. Nothing got moved. No, no issues at all. So again, I don't think that's the norm right now. We I don't have a think lot so. Of friends I, we have a lot of friends that are on tour right now that are about a week in and have already had canceled shows, had to, you know, someone in their crew has gotten it, someone. So every day that passed for us, we just kind of look around and we're like, okay, like we're still doing it, you know, like here we go. So especially when we were getting texts from our friends that were like, yo, we're all at a hotel for the next eight days because someone got it. And then it was yeah. like, this show got canceled and this show got moved. And so we were just like, kind of like, oh, well, it's bound to happen to us, like just out of even. Yeah straight up percentages you know so yeah. but it just didn't so again i think that it's it's pretty wild that we got through the whole thing so that is wild do you guys our, have any... our homies at bayside are still crushing they've been on yeah. tour longer than us and they're 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 doing the same approach as us like very strict very band in the bubble and they're they're pushing like week five without anything yeah. which is really cool it's, so it's possible Jack, like two days ago he was saying yeah like he's like dude i don't leave the bus <laughs> like I'm, I'm yeah. on the bus. I, I go inside. I play the show. I come back to the bus. So yeah. Also, Scott, our my old drum tech. He's drum teching. Oh, I forget the name of the band, but they're on tour. Mammoth. Right. Mammoth. Yeah, yeah. And they're they're pushing like six weeks too, and they're doing the same thing, and they haven't had a single issue. So it is possible, and you know, and, and again, no matter how hard you try, it still is could happen. So I, I don't think if it happens anyone on tour, it's like oh they were reckless. That's like you yeah. said, we were. But it's just the reality is it's out there and, and no matter what it can happen. So I think that um, moving forward, like with everyone doing what they're doing, I think is the only way we talked about that a ton. Like, I feel like we owed it to our industry to at least try it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like if everyone just says it's still not right, we can't tour. It's like what happens to live shows? What happens to bands touring? It, it might go away forever until you actually you know, we don't know what the future is. So it's like, we got to give it a go and try our hardest and be as safe as we possibly can. And, and hopefully it encourages other bands to get out there as well. You know, if they can, you know, and if they can't, then it's no problem. But it's like, if bands want to start getting back at it, I think it's good for the, for, for everyone. People need it, you know, as much as they, you know, uh, it's, it's live shows and being back in front of people, I think is important. So. Yeah. And it was definitely, there was a question of conscience involved as well, because you're, or, which like we, we discussed. You're asking fans to come to a place and congregate together in close quarters. Yeah. And they've been avoiding for years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So there was some of that, you know. Yeah. And I think, I mean, if I want to, if I could throw my two cents in, I just think at some point we got to live life. We have, yeah. we have to be cautious, do what we can, like you guys are doing. But touring, will go on and as the year progresses and then we get into 2022 it's going to get better how can i mean yeah. it, there may be waves Absolutely. of different covid stuff yeah. that happens but as we experience it we kind of have a better idea of what to do when these what things happen yeah. and, and and so yeah i think the only real way to do it is to just do your best and try something and if that doesn't work you try something else next time and Absolutely. so Obviously, yeah, it worked absolutely. for you guys this time, so you could do another yeah. tour with the same protocols in Approach. place. Yeah, absolutely. See how it goes. 
Yeah. And like I said, I hope it encourages other bands. Like, that's what I love to talk about and be open. Like, what did you guys do? You know, now it's like getting bands talking. Like, how did you guys do this? And it's like, we could share all of that stuff. You know, here's how we did it. Here's how we approached it. And, um, yeah, hopefully it gets bands out there more. So did you take any tests yeah. like regularly or was it only when you felt bad? Did, did you take any tests during the, the tour? Well, just I, like I took one. I mean, we kind of kept it more towards like if you're feeling something, you know what I mean? Or if you felt, you know, like you're like our merch guy who's going to be around the most people. Mm -hmm. He tested a good amount pretty much the whole tour. He was he tested pretty consistently and our sound guy tested a few times. And so, you know, we were trying not to over test also just because it's like anxiety and, and all of that. You know, it's like if, you're, if everyone's just testing every single day, I think you're like you're stressing yourself out, which is not good for your body either. You know what I mean? Your immune yeah. system, all of that stuff. So it's like, we're trying to find the balance of like, let's have fun. Let's enjoy ourselves as much as we possibly can, but let's be as safe as we can. And so some of the venues would make you test, you know, um, every venue had like different protocols, but our goal was just to like find the balance of getting through the tour safely. And also like still not making ourselves miserable by like, stressing ourselves out so finding that balance was was key as well nice yeah and there's also oh. false positives are possible too well so that's what i was gonna I say. imagine what i was gonna say. yeah yeah <laughs> was the whole bus like they would just be like oh what do we do and it's like and then if it's a, and then it's just too much for yeah. no reason you know? yeah, yeah 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 that's stressful Basically. just your yeah. whole tour on the line for yeah. one little yeah, thing one, it was, yeah it was definitely interesting um because again not all of the the protocols were ours. A lot of the protocols were just Live Nation or different venues, and and like you know, we got some blowback when we announced our our protocols, and yeah. I guess that's to be expected, you know. But people don't want to be disappointed, you know. Yeah. People don't want to hear like, oh, well, everyone can come but you, yeah. You know? yeah. But but at the same time, it's like, dude, you have to take those steps to make sure like everyone is as safe as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, again, I think bands doing what they feel is good for them is good, you know, and, and yeah, absolutely. fans should do the same thing. Do what's good for yeah. you, you know, and yeah. Yeah. if you feel safe, come to the show, have fun and yeah. don't cough on people. <laughs> <laughs> I've gone to a couple local shows. Uh, I don't know if I've really gone. I don't think I've gone to like a real, a real like touring show. Like it's all been local punk bands and things like that, which is, you know, to be expected. It, there, there's, it's like a local business, you know, employees yeah, yeah. are wearing masks. No, half the people are, half the people aren't in there, yeah. but I wore a mask kind of in, inside and um, I don't know. It, it seemed fine. It seemed like, yeah, this is this is okay, um, but at the same time, you just never know. So I think just yeah. the consistency is is key. Be consistent with whatever you're doing, and yeah. that's all you can really do. So yeah. nothing's perfect. Mask right. isn't gonna stop 100. Yeah, you know. But I mean, like I said, when I got it, I was like vaxxed, mask all the time, did all the stuff I possibly could, and I still got. It. So it's like it, you know, like you said, it's like you still try your hardest, whatever that looks like, you know, to me, it's like, that's the only way for is everyone just actually does something, just yeah. do something to help. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> what, if you're sick, don't do anything. If you know, you're like, just help to some extent so we can all get through it. Cause it's like the ones that just don't want to do anything I'm like that just doesn't help. Like just help do, do try your hardest. And I think we'll like you be on the other side. And like you said, no one knows what exactly what that looks like, but it's like, we will get through it. We just have to find the safest, best way, you know? So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So are you guys, you guys got more touring planned shows, anything like that, or just new, new album or what? Yeah, we're just writing new stuff. Now we have chain fest in, in uh, October in California. That's our only show for the rest of the year. Um, and then like we said earlier, we're still all full time do other stuff. So mm -hmm. we can't, I don't know what the touring is going to look like next year for us, but right now we have five songs done and then we're trying to do five more um, and maybe do like a full length or something. But really we just got no rules. We got no label. We got no one telling us yes or no for anything. So right we're just doing everything on our own terms, which is really fun and really uh, cool creatively. We can just take our time. And so that's, that's the plan right now. Just kind of do what we want. <laughs> that's excellent. <laughs> yeah. And you got to really think long and hard for every tour you book now because yeah, you're like so much more to think about 
can't just be yeah. like, ah, oh, yeah, let's book a tour. No part, yeah, big yeah. deal, you know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a different Monday situation. Off, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I think when you're a band going on almost twenty years coming up uh yeah. next year if next we year. don't count the you know the few few years of chill uh <laughs> 20 years next year so i mean people always expect something fun on those big yeah, big years so no pressure there but uh, i'll be yeah <laughs> i'll be watching waiting with my binoculars <laughs> what's amberlin doing i mean we we talked about it we're like you know like you said if you don't count the years we broke up i mean from when we started to now it's been 20 years so it is cool to be like what what could we do you know yeah so yeah. we'll see everyone's on different schedules and has different um requirements for them with where they're at so it really just depends on what we can do so of course yeah well, joey what are you what are you uh, what are you thinking anything you want to add i was actually really curious like we were talking about how wild texas and florida are <laughs> yeah what's what's the what's the temperature in washington right now the actual temperature As, no 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 the, <laughs> the social temperature. social uh, well, I live in Bremerton, Washington, so it's um, there's there's some some rednecks out here for sure that have the big American flags <laughs> on the back. All ba- the way from here to there, that's crazy. It's like the yeah. Al Qaeda, American Al Qaeda kind of thing, you know, where they have the right. the flags on their trucks. So there's that. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's a pretty good mix of just yeah. regular people and 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 you know, very very liberal left side people and and right side you know like it it goes all over um but for the most part it's a very very democratic state overall um but you know i think the loudest the loudest people are usually the smallest minority it's just weird like that but yeah um I haven't really noticed much, honestly. I don't go a lot of places. I'll go to a few different bars to eat now and again, and they're never that busy. Um, I'm not. I haven't really been going out drinking, like going out to a bar drinking. Um, if I'm going out, it's usually like a punk show, like I was doing. And so I pretty much I spend most of my time here at the studio, back at home, back and forth to my parents, going to the you know the post office, dropping off yeah. merch. Uh, my parents are going out of town coming up, so I got to go relearn every now and again, I'll have to like do mail order for MXPX. And I, yeah. and if it's been a while, we have new products, different ways of packing stuff that I have to relearn. So I'll go learn how to do that. <laughs> so that's coming up for me soon. <laughs> I know that's way off, off the, the social, uh, question you kind of asked, but <laughs> that's what I've been doing. Just social, yeah. nothing more social of a social barometer than going to the post office. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a whole other world over there. I've gotten very yeah. familiar with our post office because of the, our box sets that we, we've been yeah, mailing out. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Fi- finally pretty much done with all that. But Man, that's awesome. That took a long time, let me tell you. Yeah, vinyl's taken. 1,500 plus packages, all 17 pounds each. Oh, yikes. Geez. Not all at the same time, but, you know, over the course of a couple weeks or, you know, a month. That's a lot. And it was a geez. lot, yeah. And we, That's awesome. we've never done that much, just like that big, that much. It's always been yeah, like, right. okay, maybe a bunch of t-shirts or like CDs yeah, yeah. or something, but yeah, 10 records plus a book and a slip mat in there. It's like in there. That's sick though. Dude, congrats. That's amazing. <laughs> thanks. Yeah. yeah way to go, man. <laughs> well, thanks. So Sorry to make this right? about me, but, uh, well, uh, but you know, overall, Overall, it feels good over here. They haven't shut anything down. The, you know, for a long time, it was, um, I think things were closed or closing down at midnight, you know, if you're a bar. But that's been open till two, which is our normal times. Uh, New York is probably like four. I don't know if it still is these days. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, so so things are fairly normal. It's just you kind of, you go into a business, you wear your mask, and yeah. Yeah. it doesn't seem that weird to me. So yeah. I guess I don't even know what normal is at this point. The like, new normal. Yeah, like, the new normal. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. yeah. I just, you know, I try to find the positivity throughout my day. And, and it's not that hard to find, hard honestly. Yeah. yeah. All right, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk. Dude, of course, man. Thank you so course, much. It's so, so much fun. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Definitely. Next time we'll do it again. Next time we'll talk songwriting production i want to talk about oh, yeah. delay pedals with you joey but i feel like oh, we should wait let's wait on that till next time you can leave me off on that one yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all 
I talk really kick pedals really. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he yeah. just talks like sticks and stuff. So. Sticks, heads. Stick weight. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Dr- drumming is just, it's the, it's, it's so the primitive. It's so primitive. It's <laughs> yeah. like. And shit. It's like, what, I always just, I always think it's the funniest instrument. It's all I play, but I'm like, it's just so dumb. You just hit stuff. It like, really I know. Like, it really. Like, I agree with you. <laughs> it's trog, troglodyte type stuff. Yeah. yeah. But I do have to the use trogs. four limbs, which is way harder, so it's fine. You know, you add some <laughs> pixie dust to the tape. It, it, it sounds good. It sounds good. It really pops. All right. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Nate. Thanks so much, Mike. Appreciate it, you guys. Thanks, man. This will be out soon. See you later. <laughs> All right.